Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. It is now time to try something different and to try a bit of a challenge here today in the TT circuit of Assen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to attempt to lap the entire grid on the hardest difficulty in the game here in Assen. Ladies and gentlemen, why not let it fly? Let's find out what happens. So I'm making this one a little bit more of a challenge. I think this could bite me back on the bottom at the end of it, but we'll see what happens. We'll start from the back of the grid and I'll try and absolutely go for it. We are going to be doing 26 laps of the Dutch TT of Assen. So let's see what we can do. I think roughly, judging how well we dominated this in career mode, both the first season, the second season and the third season, I think it's possible but we've got to maintain good lap times and keep probably three to four seconds faster than the AI, I would imagine. Now, the reason I can do it against 120% difficulty AI is because of this here. The AI are absolutely terrible in the circuit of Assen here in MotoGP 23. It's goodness we were off the circuit there trying to get past on an AI Bastianini. So they struggle into Struben for turn five and then they struggle a lot going into the right-hander before, uh, just after Mandevin, which is turn 10. So those two points, and of course, I mustn't forget as well, the terrific Giotta Mishake, and they also struggle there quite a lot as well, and even De Bolters a moment ago, as you see uh, Brad Binder going in rather deep. So there it is, prime example on your right-hand side of your screen, Manyaya going tight, look at Quattara running off the circuit there. They're just very messy, they're not in control. I think we should have a good chance of possibly doing this here today. It all depends on what happens behind us. Fabio Quattro already has got a second lead on us, which could make things difficult because it could be difficult to catch up to him. I'm going to go for it, so let's see what happens. So across the line, this is the first lap. 25 more laps to go. Before you watch the rest of this video, let me know in the comments section down below about your predictions. Can we get it done or am I barking mad? Could be. I haven't tried this. This has not been a test. This is my only run doing it. We'll just see what happens. But all I know is that I'm actually really keen to get on with this one. So, okay, first things first. Out of Strubman there, which is turn five. We've got two seconds advantage. 2.5 seconds. Does it go up to three? Not quite. You know what? I wonder if that we should have started from pole position, because now I'm thinking about it, that would have been three seconds already found within that lap. What, three seconds, of course, sir. Uh, not a massive amount of time, considering we want to find at least one minute 30 of an advantage. That's a lot. That, that is a lot of time for an advantage here. But we'll just see what happens. I'm off the circuit there, going into the Ducas Loop corner for turn 11. But to start off with, we're all right. We are going to have to use power setting to pretty much 90% of this race. Using power setting 3 will just completely eat away from our fuel. I'm also not sure if I should have used this particular version of the Aprilia, but I just fancied using Miguel Oliveira. I read the comments in a couple of videos recently, and uh, they were disappointed that Miguel Oliveira had uh, a couple of crashes in the previous video. So I wanted to do this for them. Miguel Oliveira here in Aston. Let's see what he can do. So first and foremost, a lap time there of a 1 minute 30, 2, 6, 8. That's relatively good, with all things considered. I think we might need to get into the 129s comfortably to have a real chance at this. But a 130 low is good enough, I think. That's the biggest part. I haven't done this. I haven't practised. I'm just going off what I felt like we could do in the practice and uh, the, not the practice, sorry, the the career mode. I couldn't think of the word there, but in career mode, I was doing like 1 minute 30s is my best lap. There's 1 minute 35s, 36s, 37s. I think we're going to be doing a lot better here, even with a bike such as the RNF Aprilia. It doesn't matter to me if it's uh, lower on performance points. I don't think it's going to really make a difference. Of course, balance performance is not necessarily a feature you can use for quick races. I'm not, I'm, at least I'm not aware of. I think it's already on. But for time trial, that's uh, definitely a feature where you can use it. So, just looking at the map there on the bottom of the corner screen, I'm going to be looking at that a lot throughout the duration of this Grand Prix. There's a couple of riders there into the ramp, uh, into 
But yeah, it's going into Mandeville now for the Duke of Slip for turn 11. They're, they're far behind already in the early stages. I just temporarily cut the corner there. Not actually what I'm trying to do here. As we do set the new fastest lap. A little bit uh, misleading since I did just cut the corner ever so slightly. Count that as a track limit warning if you want. There's someone who's just gone down, as a matter of fact, into the left-hander for Ramshuk for turn 15. So we'll probably lap them first. I <laughs> don't know who it is, but I'm guessing we'll lap them. And as you can see already, we're three laps in, and we've got 10 second advantage. I'm not a mathematician, and I'm not very good at mathematics. So I don't know if we're on track. I guess we're going to have to figure it out. As long as I see that gap increasing every single lap, we should be fine. And with uh, probably what? 45 minutes uh, this race will take, so a good half an hour more to go. We've got a lot of time to get this done. It's just a matter of if. This is how my mind probes to make content. I'm always trying to be creative and look at something different for us and for the viewers. And I think this could be fun. If we nail it today, I'm going to be ex extremely excited. But if not, we're going to have to come back and try it again. Maybe 120% is too optimistic. I don't really know. I should have practiced, I should have done a dummy run, but I just wanted to jump on it and just absolutely go for it. It's my first video I'm recording today here, so this will set me up well for any races of career mode I've got to do later. So, into the gear to chicane once again. Not bad across the line, it's a slower lap time, so we've just dropped a tenth from uh, lap number two as we get very aggressive upon the brakes into the Harbock corner. This is lap four of 26 completed so we now have plenty to go <laughs> no long lap penalties no mistakes no crashes we can't afford any of that here today i must confess that uh, taking our time to get past on quatrar as well could also bite us on the backside here he's now going into the right hander for turn four then he'll go into struben for turn five that is exactly where that gap is going to improve so take a look at the gap top left and corner of your screen 13 seconds. It didn't really improve, did it? Maybe he nailed it that time around, but I was... Exp oh, okay, it's up to 13 and a half now. Slowly improving. Bit of a bizarre top 10, by the way. I know you can't see the top 10, but uh, top 8. Only one Ducati... Or excuse me, two Ducatis. Alex Marquez is there in 6th place. Actually, just uh, went past Alex Marquez there briefly. But uh, out of the Duke of Sloot, we now have 13... 14 seconds clear. This is another solid lap time, which is bound to put us into the 129s. Good thing about having 100% race distance is those tyres are going to feel so comfortable compared to the sprint situations or even a lower, re redu a reduced race. And there it is, the first 129 of the session. 129.934. Coming in from a multiple Grand Prix winner, Miguel Oliveira. Must confess, I do really love the way this Aprilia feels. I, I, I was actually doing another video, which I won't spoil because I've got another fresh video idea to come either the end of this week or next week. And I was using Miguel Oliveira for that as well, so I'm going to have to change him now for that video because I don't want to use Miguel twice. No disrespect to Miguel, but uh, I like to change it up. Possibly use a different motorcycle, but whilst I was halfway through that video, I just felt, yeah, this would be great if I used the Aprilia for something else. And uh, hence the reason we're here now, here in the Dutch TT of Assen. The marvellous and magnificent circuit, one of my favourites in MotoGP 23, and in fact, one of my favourite circuits of all time. I absolutely adore this circuit. So, on to the right hander then. On to the power. We are just neck and neck with the Delta. We might be improving again here. Hopefully this is the start of the run of the 129 lap times. And this is the last lap now that uh, to move over on the timing sheet on the right hand side. So we're going to get a good overview now of all the lap times we've done from the get go. So across the line, it's another 130, but look at those lap times. Very consistent. This is exactly what we need. I'm going all out. Not just for the victory, but to lap every single rider here in MotoGP 23 on the hardest difficulty in the game. 
judging by it now, I think we should be all right. Because bear, we're going to take a look at now is that for me, we're going to get a 20 second advantage by the end of this lap, I imagine. We'd have a 40 second advantage by lap 14. From there, another additional seven laps, we might have one minute 20. All depends what happens, because don't forget as well, when we get up to the AI, we've then got to get past them. And considering how dodgy they are in parts of the track, such as DeBolt, they're quite aggressive into here. Turn 10 for Mandevin, as explained a moment ago, for the Duke is through for turn 11. Turn 5 for Struben, the gear to Misha Kane. There's going to be a lot of moments where the AI are going to be stuck in our way. They're going to be moving roadblocks, which is really the point that's going to make me nervous. We'll see what happens. But I think we've got a quite a few laps to get there yet. And unbelievably, we're now just completing lap number seven. This is going really quickly. Much quicker than I anticipated. But I'm all for it. I'm excited for this one. Across the line, it's another solid lap time. It's a 130.0. Six, nine. This is exactly what we needed to do. Check out the, the stalls on the left-hand side there. Did you see that? <laughs> Just going into turn one. Never actually noticed the merchandise stands. In fact, I've got some merchandise arriving soon. So within the next two hours or so, I think I'm getting some more British Superbike merch. Maybe I'll post a picture. Let me know if you want to see that. <laughs> I'll, I'll gladly show you. But anyway, out on the left-hand side, we now have a 22 and a half second advantage. By the conclusion of this lap time, it could be 25. Maybe that's too much. It all depends what lap times Fabio Quattararo is doing. I don't know what laps he's doing. I really don't. On to the right hand of him. 23 seconds. He's just exiting turn 5 now. Of course, turn 5 is the corner that Alicia Spargro took out Fabio Quattararo a few years ago. In fact, I'm wrong. It was the other way around. Fabio Quattararo took out Alicia, of course, and uh, binned it himself. Again, a tenth of a second down, though. But as long as we stay within a couple of tenths, I could say at the most we could lose three or four tenths. Just can't go backwards and start going into the 30.5s, for example. That would be a bit too much. But here out to the Ramshuk and then into the GT chicane. Nice and tight. Quick turn to the left. Really close to cutting the track limits there. I think I might have done, but across the line, it is a fresh lap time. Of a 129.901, we are yet to reach the 25 second gap mark. And ah, this is what I feared. Look at the gap from Quattararo to, uh, who is it, Brad Binder in third. Yeah, that's what I wanted to avoid. Because what we could find here, with a gap like that, we might be able to catch up to second. And the other podium positions, uh, excuse me, third place... But catching up to that final position on the rostrum there in second, it could be difficult. It could be really hard, this. I guess the challenge will be, at the very least, to finish on the podium. But that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to finish uh, top step after lapping everyone. This is a really solid lap time coming here now. Definitely going to find the mid-echelon of the 129s. So go into DeBolt for turn 9. Five tenths of a second has been captured on this lap. We could, we could might get it to six tenths. We have to be strong into the final couple of corners. Here is the uh, Muenima corner. I can never say that right. I really can't. I always try. I hear Matt Burt say it so effortlessly. I try it myself and it just gets all gobbledygook. 28 seconds is the gap. Into the Giet Chicane then. Onto the power. This is going to be a new lap time. It is a 129.401. Magnificent. That's a brilliant lap. Is a 128 power? Is 128 possible in this race? Could be a little bit too optimistic. But we could do with getting there. Right, so this is the interesting part now. So the, the rider in final position there, the very last place... Has just passed Sector 2. I think we're going to complete Sector 1 before he completes Sector 2. That's a great understanding now to see how quickly we're catching up here. We have just completed Sector 2. Uh, sector 1 rather. Whoa, steady. <laughs> Don't bin it now. If we bin it, that's it. I cannot do anything about that. Quattararo is now just towards the long lap penalty loop. 
of turn three. Now he goes into Struben for turn five. This has been very interesting so far. I have thoroughly enjoyed this one. If you're still watching this right on the edge of your seat, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am because I'm having a whale of a time here. This is brilliant. Much better than I anticipated. Just a good old fashioned challenge of fun here in MotoGP 23. On to the left hand side then. This is the Ramshuk corner. On to the brakes. And nice and tight the apex. Quick change of direction, running it across the curb. A little bit risky, but it works. Across the line, 129.835. So we have now comfortably established ourselves within the 129 lap times. This is exactly what I was looking for when I started today's video. 32 seconds is the gap. It's Fabio Quattararo. In fact, he's nowhere near the GT chicane. That's what I was going to say. I was expecting him to be near there right now, but he's nowhere near it. He's going into Ramshuk now. Now he's in the GT chicane. Let's see what the gap is when he crosses the line. Gap is 33 seconds. Across the line goes Fabio. Now we're 33 and a half. We're close. If we stay as we are, I think we should be on call to get the 40 second advantage by lap 14. Now it was uh, certainly been improving the lap times at least. Into the left hander for Debolt for turn 9. Now onto the right hand side. I've got to say, once again, I'm going to gush over this RSG people. But this Aprilia feels fantastic. Really comfortable bike to ride. And I love the vibration on this motorcycle. It's basically just allowing me to just ride and just go for it. It's brilliant. Really positive right now as we go into the left hander. We are almost in the same sector as the rider in last place. I think we might. We might get across the line before they complete the first sector. In fact, there's quite a few riders there. Across the line, yes. We're in the same sector now as the final couple of riders on this grid. It's happening. There's an identical lap time from lap 8. So 129.901 from the Portuguese rider. We're doing well here. I think this is going to plan. It's just all depends on Fabio Quattararo. I don't think I can catch him up. If only he wasn't that damn quick. We might have a chance here. I'm not going to lose hope yet because we are well on truly par for this one. Oh, Maverick's gone down. Where's he gone down in the, uh, the Ramshuk corner? He's still riding, but he has rejoined the race and he is plummeting down the order. We go now into the Debult corner, just downshifting calmly. That's a bit deep. Don't bin it now, for God's sake. Losing a bit of time. Oh, that's tight to the apex. Just keep it together. Got uh, easy just uh, staring at the map in the bottom left corner of your screen. It's easy to do. Of course, at this point, we'd be on uh, the cooldown lap now, pretty much, for my career mode. Doing a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 laps. You've pretty much got it comfortable at this point here in Assen. About a 40 second lead. He's still hovering there. Out of the left hander. This is going to be another 30. Lost our streak temporarily. So 130.136. Now on to the right hander. This is the Harbot corner. We are still in the same sector as the riders ahead. Now, interestingly, where's the other riders gone? I felt like we were closer to the other riders last time as... I wonder if that person who was really far behind has DNF'd. Because I don't see him anymore. We'll have to see. I'm going to have to keep on working for this. Going to keep on pushing. This is very interesting now. This is a really telling point. We're just going to cross the line now. Oh, not quite. Fabio is still two sectors behind. We're almost there. I think it's going to hit me when I see the AI in front of us. This is the hardest difficulty in the game, may I remind you. 120% difficulty is on offer here today. This is going to be one of the toughest challenges we've had. It's probably not going to be as tough as the Saxon Ring challenge when I finally eventually try and conquer them. I think I can only do that in a three lap sprint to be quite honest with you. 
but we'll get to the sax ring at some point. It's one of my last achievements of the game. One of the achievements I need is to finish a race with every single manufacturer. I do believe I need Aprilia and something else. I actually don't know. I, I don't. I haven't really done many quick races. Done one with Honda. I know that much. I've done one with Factory Ducati. Just don't know whether I've used the Yamaha. Possibly I have actually. Maybe in a in a video. I don't know. But we are now into the se same sector again. As the ride is ahead of us, but I just can't keep in the same sector now. Are we losing time? Surely not. This is getting harder, and I'm beginning to question if this is going to work or not. We are ahead of schedule by five seconds. Fabio Quattararo was crossing the line before we made the second split. We are now crossing the second split, and he's only just come out of the GT chicane. We've got this. Johan Zarco has now got a gap as well, hasn't he? So that's going to make it a little bit more challenging as well. AI is not in my favour here right now. Quattararo is just there going out of turn three there. Ooh, I think it's all going to matter. For the GT chicane and then into Strubben. It all depends where we see the AI. It's hard to see and have that foresight right now because with 12 laps remaining, I'm not sure I will lap them, you know. I might. This might be a little bit too ambitious. I might have been too optimistic here. It's another solid 1 minute 29 lap time and i got to say that the consistency in this track right now is looking very good. But we must be close to seeing the AI now. Keep an eye on the right hand side of your screen, guys and girls. There's a yellow flag ahead of us, so surely someone's gone down. There, there it is. I've seen a rider. Did you see him? There was a rider ahead of us there. It's on. It's game on. Maybe I can't lap them all, but maybe we'll get top ten. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll try and finish in the points. I do need to do a challenge at some point. One of uh, the aces requested where we have a lap down. I don't want to use Assen again because I think it would be too easy. But I would like to probably do that by going into the pits or something and maybe doing like a, a ride through penalty. I think that certainly would make a, an interesting video. But we'll definitely have a chance of uh, letting the AI lap us and then see if we can fight back. But doing it on the 120% difficulty could be difficult unless it's at this circuit again. And I, I kind of want to avoid using this track again. I think the Red Bull Ring of Austria could work. And possibly Donington Park or Laguna Seca. They are quite slow in those areas as well. But this is going to be... Oh, steady. Oh, sharp intake of breath there as I got a little bit deep. Up onto the brakes into the ramshuck corner. This is not going to be a good lap. This could be our worst lap yet. In fact, maybe not. Across the line. A 130.4. I'm not sure, actually. I think that could be our worst lap yet. Seeing the AI and seeing how close we're getting here is making me a little bit nervous. Look at them. There's three riders ahead of us. And we now have a 52 second advantage. I didn't even look at the gap, to be quite honest with you. We found a lot of time within minutes. I can't believe that. It was 45 seconds on lap 14. Has Fabio made a mistake somewhere then? I don't know, but hopefully he keeps on making them to keep, us, uh, keep the dream alive. Of lapping everyone. So here we go then. Into the fast Rushkin hook. And then into the right hand side for the second ball. We are closing in. I'm getting a little bit nervous now. Of course at this stage of the race. At 16 laps or 15 laps completed. My nerves are beginning to get a bit shot. If they. No I better not say it. I don't want to jinx myself. But if they punt me off the circuit. I'll, I'll go mad. I'll be fuming. I really will. I'll be more mad than a. Uh, the lag taking me out in that uh, Ace Academy Cup the other day in Catalonia. That was bloody well annoying, that was. <laughs> Here we go then. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a chance now to overtake for the first time since 15 laps ago. Here it comes. Blue flags are out. So get the hell out of the way, boys and girls. A certain Portuguese rider, the number 88, is on a charge. Get out of the way. Okay, on the brakes then. Joanne Mir is the first victim. Around, the Come on, Joanne. Went, almost went round the outside of the Honda Man. And now he's getting in the way again. If he takes me out, I'll be bloody livid. 
if anyone takes me out for that matter. He's got the inside line. It's blue flag! Come on, move! Oh, this is tense. 1.3 is the is the time of lost messing around with these riders. Look at Takaki Nakagami. This game not doing him any justice. Lost 1.5 seconds there. That's a big amount of time to lose by faffing around with three riders who didn't listen to the blue flags. AI brain dead. <laughs> Come on. 120% difficulty with 0% actual intelligence. Jesus. There's a yellow flag out ahead of us. It's uh, one of the Tech 3 gas gas. It's Paul Spargo. So that was an easy overtake. Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate the assistance. 1.7 is what we lost there. That's really annoying. We lost a huge amount of time there. That's time I can't afford to lose. Quick look at the gaps then. Out to the hog hide, then into Ramshuk for turn 15. There's a couple of riders which we're, we might catch up to on this next lap. What's the gap going to be across the line though? Two seconds lost on there. Ah. 131.7. Still in the 130 well, uh, 131s. It's not all that bad. In fact, oh, it's the 131s. It didn't occur to me. We've not done a 131 before. Bloody hell. That's not good enough. I've got to get better at overtaking them next time. I, I would probably just usually go for it without too much you know, concern. But since this has been a long race so far, it, this is when it matters the most. I, I could easily muck it all up now if we're not careful. One and a half tenths of a second is what we've lost on this lap time. But we've found two seconds compared to the previous lap. So that's a big difference. The gap is about to reach a minute. 59 seconds past Fabio Quattararo. Onto the brakes, the left hander downshifted a bit prematurely there. Keep it together, Matt. Come on. Don't want to start messing us up. Oh, now I'm getting tense. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the minute gap. God, I've not seen that in a long time. Probably not since a, an online race. Maybe a live GP in the rain. We're losing a second on this lap. Raul Fernandez, teammate of ours, has gone down. Looks like he's binned it in the GT chicane. Another yellow flag out, unless it's the same incident. Onto the brakes then. Keep it in tight to the apex, run it across the curb, back across to the left. Blue flags are still out. Who's going to adhere? I don't think anyone's going to adhere, are they? So we found a second compared to the previous lap, but that's still not a good lap. Fabio Di Giantonio, Alex Rins there together. This is lap 19. So, can we get through on Rins? I need to make short work of the Honda Man. I really do. Of course, Monster Energy Yamaha bound for next season. Can we get through? Please don't turn into me aggressively. Please don't. Oh, for goodness sake. We lost four tenths there. Come on. It's a blue flag move. Look at the time we lost. That is a massive amount. I'm getting a little bit frustrated here because it's so difficult to get past these riders. So I need to hurry up, get the move done. Oh, no! Oh, my God! Oh, my Lord Almighty, I pressed that. Oh! What a save! I lent my... Th oh, my God, hearts in mouths. That's it. That's it, I'm afraid. I don't think I can do this now. Whoa, oh, wow. My heart is in my mouth. I know what you're thinking. Why did you downshift at first? I didn't even mean to do that. I rested my index finger. on. Oh, someone's gone down there. Is it Alex? I think Alex Rins has binned it. That could have been me a moment ago. Bloody hell that. Oh, I'm shaking. That was... Whoa. Oh, and I've messed up the final corner. Oof. All right. Yes. Sorry about that, guys. Basically, I, I lent my index finger on the R1 button. That's my downshift. And I just pressed it ever so slightly. I didn't even feel like I pressed it then. But clearly... Oh, wow. That was scary. That is it, though. Unfortunately, guys, I will not be able to get the job done. I don't think so now. We've got a lot of work to do. Look at Fabio. What is he doing? Come on, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we lost five seconds on that lap there. 
I tell you what, if we get to the end of this and we finish third with Fabio finishing like a second ahead of us, I'll be gutted. Well, it's certainly opening the doors to do this again. It's not over yet. There's a lot of riders still crashing. But with ah, six and a half laps to go, there's not much to do now, is there? That was difficult. Really? Oh, <laughs> Lord almighty. I didn't even feel the downshifter first. I just heard the bike scream and I just reacted on instinct. I'm surprised we saved that. I really am. I'm very pleased we saved it. Because I think that video right there and then would have had me walking out my room. Would have been walking out of Studio Ace. As a very disconsolate man. What the hell is Jack Miller doing? That's a unique strategy. That's not how Nicky Io did it all those years ago. Where are we now then? 15th? Are we in the points? Uh, we are in the points again. So we're getting uh, 26 points now. <laughs> if only that was a thing. There's Brad Bind. He'll try and get through on the South African. Not able to get through, but as long as he doesn't impede our progress too much. Should be relatively good. He's going to turn in quite abruptly, so embrace for impact! <laughs> Why? Stop doing that. Oh, and now I'm wheeling because of the impact. I don't know why this game does that. You get you hit the AI quite aggressively, or they hit you. And you want to wheelie for some reason. I, I don't want to celebrate for the fact I got hit. <laughs> it's just that the bike, obviously, that's getting a bit loose. Wow, I'm really nervous about going into that corner now. Down shift to second gear. I don't see why we can't get past all of these. Who's in this battle? This is one of the Aprilias. Ah, yes. Whoa, Brad! Good lord! What is it with the AI in this game? Come on! Stop being so aggressive! I, mean, I guess they're not even aggressive, they're just clueless. It's like racing uh, in a live GP with the riders who have never played before. So, coming around the outside of Brad, I want to move past this KTM as soon rather than later. He is making me incredibly nervous and he will not yield, even though, quite clearly, blue LED lights are out. He's losing the- he's lost the plot. <laughs> What are you doing, Brad? There's Maverick. There is Pekko Banyaya. What's happened to the, uh, the MotoGP World Champion? He seems to have fallen by the wayside. Down to 12th place now. Goes Pekko. So out of the right-hander then. Try and get through on Pekko as quickly as possible. We do. There's teammate Raul Fernandez. I'd like to jump a little bit then over the curb. Don't go for a lunge, Pekko. What are you doing? Lean on him. Go back for the apex. Raul will turn in quickly. Boy Martin's doing that now. Got a bit of fuel to burn here. Could use power setting three. Not really. I don't know. It's the fuel's already depleting though, isn't it? There's Martin in tenth. I might be able to get past him to get five points or six points, should I say? Into the right hander. Can we get through? Not yet. But Debolt is beckoning me, and we're through. Don't pull a Brad Binder on me though. We've seen it a lap prior. And we're up into the top 10. I've got to say, I mean, even then, top 10 is excellent con with all things considered. Bear in mind, we had the the powers, uh, the downshift to first gear into Steckenval. We've had a lot of contact with the AI here where they didn't listen to the blue flags. They did not adhere to any of it, which is really disappointing. But on to the left-hand side, and then back onto the GT chicane. There's a lot of riders ahead of us here. We could be improving. I wonder if we get top five. Is that one realistic with four laps to go? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see what happens, but... The gap to Quattraro. We're actually in the same sector as Fabio. We were, at least. And Johan Zarco in second. At uh, third, rather. It's so hard to... Uh, Realise that we're actually ahead of these guys and we're not actually fighting for 10th place, etc., in the lower stages of the points. But on to the power then. Keep it in tight, don't uh, get too caught on the curbs too much. Four riders here and all in a bit of a skirmish. Marquez, Frankie Morbidelli. Is that Alex Marquez ahead of him? It is! Oh! We're on the graphic on the left hand side, aren't we now? So ahead of him is Alicia Spargo. On to the brakes then. Oh, Marquez! <laughs> A little bit loose there goes the number 93 as we launch into Mandovan. 
Not able to get past with a 1 minute 13 advantage to Fabio. It's not going to be a, a second place here, but it's going to be good enough. It's definitely going to be a top five. I'm confident to say that. Wow. We're closing rapidly on Marquez there. As we go into the left-hand side, please don't... Oh, look at Frankie. What <laughs> chattering. On board the Monster Energy Yamaha. I don't think he'll miss that bike. <laughs> wow, that was scary. Quick uh, dive to the left-hand side. Can we get through all three of these before Harbock? I think we can. Lost a bit more time there again. On the brakes. We are now into sixth place. Excellent. Gotta try and get an A at Bastianini. Just for my MotoGP career mode perspective. Of course, he's uh, pushed us to the edge with the Red Bull KTM season last season. And with the fact that Ducati, he's not really given us much of a chance uh, to... Well, he's not really given us a challenge, has he? So, the rivalry is no longer brewing, but we can certainly reenact something here, I'm quite certain. Well, that's uh, now 36 minutes into the recording. This race has flown by. I'm shocked how quicker this has gone, to be honest. I'm really enjoying this. I, I hope you guys are too. And if you're still here at this point, let me know in the comments section down below because I'd like to thank you all for that because I appreciate this. this. is a long race. And if you're prepared to spend your evening with me, then that's, uh, that's a huge compliment. So thank you very much to those who are still watching at this stage. If you skip through, I won't be mad. Don't worry about it. As long as you're enjoying the content, that's all that really matters. So, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as well. So then, an Air Bastianini is in range. We might not get him on this lap, but I guarantee for turn one, I'll be on his rear tyre. I don't know what Michelin tyres he's gone for, but the hard front medium rear has worked a treat for me right now, and I think I've called this to perfection. I'm sure I'll be right there with him for turn one. Onto the brakes and right with that white line is late as possible we dare. Yeah, we've got a chance here. Turn in deep. I'll go tight. Beautiful. Made short work of the number 23. We are now in fifth place. That's an achievement, ladies and gentlemen. That really is. But I do fear that will be it. We're on the penultimate lap now. Marco Bezzecchi is an um, unknown amount of time ahead of us now. Quarter hours, one minute and 17. If only we didn't have that mistake earlier on. And of course, we got past the AI riders quicker. We could have done this. We actually could have done it. What an effort, though. I really tried here today. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Doesn't even feel like I've done 24 laps. Apart from the getting past the AI, I would say our, our pace has been very consistent. But now at this stage, the, uh, the medium tyre is beginning to get worn a little bit. Not easy to keep up. With the speed, tyre wear is obviously in a factor here today. Now, at this point, we were this close to... Oh my god, quattraro has gone down. Fabio's gone down. Where is he? He's in the GT chicane. The gap is now to Johan Zarco, and it's 1, uh, <laughs> 1 minute 24 seconds. But this is the final lap. If only I hadn't lost those five seconds after all. We would be ahead. Oh, I can't believe it. The dreaded downshift of first gear will be the downfall in today's video. We need one more lap, ladies and gentlemen. I could do that with even power setting one. One minute 25 is the gap. Mark up Ezeki all over the place. Please move out of the way because I can't afford to lose any more time. There's Fabio. The gap is one minute 24. I would need a 1 minute 30 gap, so that 5 seconds would put me right on the rear tail, uh, rear tail unit of Johan Zarco, so it wouldn't be enough, but it would be bloody close. What an effort. I have thoroughly enjoyed this one. This is not over yet for a po- I mean, technically I'm on the podium, because if then we positioned ourselves behind Fabio, we'd be in third, if Zarco moved up to first. So, call it what you want, guys. Call it a victory or call it a failure. Entirely up to you, but all I know is that I've given it my best shot here today and we're going to be right on the rear tail unit of Johan Zarco and Fabio Quattararo. If Zarco crashed then, that would have been the icing on the cake, but unfortunately it doesn't matter anyway because 
Quattrara will finish in third place. But just look how close that was. Guys and girls, what an effort. Oh, an achievement unlocked. Oh, that was my last motorcycle to win a race on, or at least complete a race on. Brilliant. Fresh achievement here today, but what an effort. 131.7 is the gap at the end of uh, Johan Zarco. Two minute eleven to clear from Paul Spargro. What an effort. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. But I am desperate for a drink now, so I am going to leave you. 40 minutes of recording is never quite easy. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.